very difficult to do. Would you agree that Nigeria's booming population needs better education? And if so, what are your policies for delivering on that promise? Education has always been known as um, the pathway to human progress. Economic and social mobility is possible through education. That's why the child of the poor can quickly rise up to middle class, upper middle class, and upper class, as the case may be. Education is the basis of provision of opportunities for people. And so one of the things we've learned is that Early child care education is now paramount for giving people a leg up. In today's Nigeria, more than 65% of the children of the poor do not have that kind of access. We will commence in the change to education by ensuring that foundationally the early child care education is integrated very well. We worked on that policy when I was Minister of Education into what we offer the Nigerian people. Second part of it is that the basic education, secondary education, and tertiary education all require comprehensive reforms. The key reforms would be curricula around the three steps. But we would also focus on technical and innovation education for which we put a certification arrangement within the Nigerian educational diploma and degrees. And number three is that teacher quality is at the heart of how effective the education system becomes. Some reasonable number of our teachers are okay, but majority of our teachers, numbering more than perhaps 50%, still have just a TC2 and are in the classroom. We must modernize teaching. We will take teaching to the prestigious profession that it once was by training the teachers massively and equipping them with the new knowledge of the new economy in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Fellow Durotoye, the flag bearer for the Alliance for New Nigeria. Now, uh, if you look through history, you'll see that those nations that have risen up to the dizzying heights uh, that they want to get to. I think of Singapore, for example, uh, based it uh, on education, on people as their, as their raw material. Your candidate who wants the same job that you want, to your left there, uh, just said that uh, people are educating our people with the new oil and gas. What do you say? How important is it? And how are you going to do it, more importantly? Well, permit me to quickly quote uh, the former president of the United States, Bill Clinton, when he visited Nigeria in 2001. And he said something that was really significant. He said, in the 21st century, the wealth of nations will not be found under the feet of the, its people, but will be found between their ears. Meaning that it is really what the, the knowledge, we're in the knowledge era today, and it is what the people know, intellectual capital, that really turns human resource into human capital. Meaning that the more you learn, the more your capacity to earn. And so it is critical that we are able to ensure that all of our citizens have the best opportunities, not only to be able to get a foundational education, but we are able to ensure that they are able to go as far as they can go in their aspiration to get education for opportunities in the marketplace and to start their own business. So the following things need to be done. Number one, we must ensure that our teachers are people that are committed to the success of the students and not just committed to seeing them pass an exam. They must be committed to the success of the students in life and in the future. So they must ensure that we have the best teachers who are subject experts. Today you will find one teacher teaching several subjects and being a master of none. We must make sure that we develop specializations and teachers do regular exams to, be, to keep in touch with what is going on and what's, what's going on with, within their field of specialization. The second thing is that we must invest in the infrastructure. The learning environment must be something that is pleasing to anyone who wants to learn. And the last one is that we must center values at the heart of our curriculum. It is extremely important that the way that we think drives the way that we will behave and the results that we will command in the future. 
Thank you for that. The Young Progressives Party in yeah. power, what are you going to do for education? Thank you. Um, the YPP has a, a very, very um, strong attachment to education, and I happen to be a professor myself, so I have very practical experience in this area. The first thing that our government will do is that we will bring to education the political will to make it the priority because the progress of Nigeria rises or falls on the strength of our educational system. Today, education is about 7% of our budget. In my presidency, we will begin the first budget of 2020 with not less than 20% of it devoted to education. Now, that's not enough because you can throw money at problems and it doesn't solve the problem. So the, the, the budget, 80% of the education budget is on recurrent expenditure. And that is what we're going to move away from. So, we will invest in teacher training. We will retrain and recertify Nigeria's teachers at primary school level, at secondary school level especially. We will invest in curriculum reform, moving learning. 60 to 70% of the curriculum will have to move towards technology, um, um, vocational skills, and entrepreneurship. Every young man or woman coming out of an educational system in Nigeria must know how to be able to run a business because that is how the jobs of the future are created. We will reform pedagogy. That is to say how children learn. As a professor, my 60% of my class work in terms of the grading, 60% is based on your original research. And I fought students from over 30 countries. And these are the most powerful countries in the world. So we will invest in how our children learn so that they don't just you know, cram and regurgitate for exams. Then we will invest in educational infrastructure. And finally, I will end ASU strikes in Nigeria. Now, take a look again at the screens on the left and the right candidates. Um, you may recognize uh, this bright young girl in the next video. She has 3.4 million subscribers on YouTube, and she has a question on education. Roll the tape. My name is Emanuela Samuel. I am eight years old, and I am a YouTube video creator. We all know that education is very important, especially child education. However, the quality of education in our government school is getting poor every day. And that's why parents now put their children in private schools. And we all know that not every child can go to private school because their school fees are very expensive. Now my question is, how will your administration improve teachers' training and improve the quality of education in our government schools so that every child can have access to good education? An eight-year-old from the mouth of babes there. Not everybody can go to private schools. Not everybody can afford it. And it actually has a tremendous impact and stress on households that, that has a really big impact. Government versus private. She says government is going downhill. You want to be at the head of government from the ACPN. What are you going to do to answer her questions? So I would start by saying that the public schools are the basis of lifting people out of poverty. And since our flagship agenda is to lift 80 million Nigerians out of poverty, the education of the poor in the public school, because they are the ones left behind there, will be paramount for us. And so the first thing is to identify the learning outcomes that are missing in the school system today and to fix that. To fix learning outcome, it goes to the heart of the quality of the teachers. The quality of the teachers is dependent on the kind of training that teachers get. When I was Minister of Education, we began to work on this and did accelerated program to upgrade the skills of teachers through colleges of education and the Nigerian Teachers Institute will continue. We will also give greater power to the Teachers Regulatory Council to be able to regulate the teaching profession, to bring prestige and dynamism to it. We would also work on the matter of the remuneration of the teaching profession. One of the key things that we would focus on is housing all teachers. Housing, Let, housing all teachers. 
It's a program that the private sector already indicated significant interest in. Then we would focus on the curriculum issues. One, I, one of the major problems with curriculum is how dynamic it changes. And so for, ed, for public education, it is critical that the private sector involvement enables us to see how critical reasoning and creativity, as well as entrepreneurship, already begin at the level of primary education. We will finally, and I think I'll stop there. Because Thank you very time. much. Thank you for respecting the time. This is a very passionate subject, and there are voters out there that really want to know. I personally, um, this will influence my vote, I am a product of the Jakonde school education system in Lagos, Nigeria in both primary and secondary, and now I'm moderating the 2019 presidential debate. You can be anything, but those schools, those children today, in those same schools, need support. They need to have the opportunities. As president, what will you do for them? So let me just once again reaffirm, even as you did, that I also went to a public school. I went to for staff school on the University of Ife campus and went to Morimi High School. And this was at a time in our, in our nation's life where things worked and everyone, regardless of whether you were you know, rich or poor, public schools worked for all because that was what the governance was all about, creating opportunities for all. And that is exactly what it is that the Alliance for New Nigeria party-led government is promising opportunities for all to fix education and make sure that we are back to that point where everyone who goes to a, pub, a, a public school is able to be prepared enough for success in life. Now, to make sure that this happens, we have to understand, why are people not coming to school? Well, many of them are not coming to school in part because their parents can't even afford the transportation that gets the children to school. And so one of the things that we are doing and we have as a program is what we are talking about working with public uh, bus system and ensuring that we have a free transport system for children to schools and from schools back to their bus stops closest to their homes. <laughs> Secondly, we are also going to ensure that we use the existing systems as, as, as best as possible to ensure that after school programs are going to be strengthened. How much? Are you speaking? To no, go ahead. Okay. So we have an after-school program that is going to be strengthened in the, in the evenings to ensure that um, children who are not able to go to school in the mornings because they do have to um, probably meet certain needs at home are able to come in the evenings to make sure that that happens. The last one is that we will actually enforce the law in making sure that any parent that keeps their children at home are liable of being arrested. Arrested. Okay, I will turn. Can we move on to health? And I'm going, I remember that 38 seconds from the first segment. I still have it in my pocket. You can have it now. So can I, can I comment on education and then health? Very quickly, okay. and then I want to give you enough time. Very quickly, health. when I say that um, I will be the education president of Nigeria, the YPP is committed, and my government will make secondary school education free in this country. Now, now, a lot about making our public schools better is about the fact that we are not investing in the public schools. It's what you put in that you get out. So we will invest very heavily in the public school system of this country. I am a product of public school systems. I went to Ezeyama High School in Aba, Government College of Mwahia, and the Federal Government College in Ugu, and the University of Nigeria. So I have gone through these schools, and they have also made me what I became. They are worthy of our priority. They are worthy of our investment. And we are going to put public schools back to such a standard that a lot of private schools in this country are going to have to look for a new business model. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you help. About health. Now, yes. it's all right going to school and, and getting a good education, but you've got to be healthy first. You've got yes. to be standing on your feet. You've got to have health in order to get uh, education, then wealth. That's Absolutely. the way it works. So let's talk about health here. Yes. Um, if you looked at the statistics and where Nigeria stands or many indexes 
when it comes to health, we don't do well on a lot of them. I think of child mortality, for example. Yes. Uh, health is a big problem when you've got a booming population like ours. As president, what will you to do to right that ship? My government uh, will address the challenge of health care, first of all, by focusing on the quality of the health care provision in Nigeria. That's one. Two, access to health care. We will ensure universal health coverage. We know that the uh, operational um, basic health services fund of the National Health Act of 2014 has not yet uh, been kicked in. It hasn't kicked in yet. And so we're going to look at that. How do we fund health outcomes in Nigeria? For one, the budget for health is 3% of our budget. We will move it to 15% in accordance with the Abuja uh, agreement of all African countries. It was done in Abuja here in 2001, I believe. They met and agreed, but our government has never kept to an agreement it signed and which was signed in its, capi in its capital. So we will be investing a lot. One, we will make sure that each of the six geopolitical zones in this country has a world-class hospital. We must save the $1 billion that is lost in this country every year to medical tourism. And that medical tourism begins with some of the people who are not here. Some of them are the biggest medical tourists. 11 billion naira was budgeted for the Aso Rock Clinic over three years. That is more than the 6.7 billion that was budgeted for all the teaching hospitals in this country. And yet, in the Asora Clinic, there are no syringes. And how do we know that? From the First Lady, a major uh, user of, 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 of that clinic. So the government is just not investing in public health. And my government will bring the necessary investments and prioritize as well primary health care. Thank you, sir. Okay. Madam Obi, you need to be healthy before you're educated, as I say. You heard a very clear, a clear vision for that. What's your vision when it comes to health? So number one vision is we at least have a start-off point, the National Health Insurance Scheme. We would need to expand access to it. And the universalization would mean that even those who don't yet have work, would be able to fall into that program on the basis of some cross-subsidization system that is based on transparent mechanisms of ensuring that people who are without jobs, who are unwell, will not be neglected in our society. Number two would be health practitioners. We, it is difficult for Nigeria and most of African countries to retain expert health people because the incentives are simply not there. And so we would look into the challenges of keeping our health professionals at home and servicing the needs of our health system. Number three is that we will in fact look at, look at health as a system. You cannot solve one part of it and ignore the other part. And so primary health care would operate on the basis of a value chain approach at tackling the challenges of access to health. Number four is that health outcomes have focused often on, the, uh, on not the, some of the disease burdens that actually impact our productivity. And so we will begin to connect health and well-being to economic productivity. We would work with the private sector to enlighten that knowledge of the connection between healthy well-being and productivity and incentivize through tax that opportunity for people to be given the best health care possible in the country. Thank you very much. Okay, the Alliance for New Nigeria. Health is wealth for Nigeria. How is, are you as president going to achieve that? Well, first of all, um, we will ensure that we work with the uh, state and the local governments to, to be able to produce um, quality primary health care services at the places where it matters the most, which is right there in the communities where most of the Nigerians live. And this is very important because 
about easily about 90% of the cases that eventually come into secondary and tertiary healthcare uh, institutions could have been solved at a point in time um, when it was a primary healthcare issue. And we're talking about things like, you know, um, malaria. We're talking about things like cholera. We're talking about things like dysentery and diarrhea. These are things that can easily be solved, first of all, at the primary healthcare center. And of course, you, you can even take things like high blood pressure, which if we had the equipment at the primary healthcare center, it would have stemmed the possibility of it becoming a stroke, which has to then become something that you refer to the secondary and tertiary healthcare centers. So we've got to strengthen the primary healthcare center. And since that is within the purview of the local government, but everyone in the local government is still a Nigerian, therefore it is my responsibility also and the responsibility of the federal government to ensure that every Nigerian is healthy. Second thing that we've got to do is to make sure that everyone above the age of 60 is going to get free health care, and everyone below the age of five is going to get free health care, including <laughs> pregnant women also. Again, this is very important, because these are the people who have served and given of themselves, and in the times when they have to be, you know, uh, the, 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 there should be a return on their service, then this is one of the things that has to happen. The last thing I'm going to quickly talk about is the fact that we must ensure that we have uh, health practitioners as opposed to medical doctors at the primary health care level. Because, again, medical doctors are really traveling abroad, and we can train health care practitioners within the first six months, and most importantly, even youth coppers can be trained to easily diagnose primary health care issues that can be easily, easily trained on. Now, uh, you heard from uh, your fellow candidate that they're going, he's going to devote 20% of the budget to education and uh, a significant amount, 15% uh, to health care. That's expensive. But he, he seems to have a plan for that. Even in the UK and countries and America, they struggle with their education budgets. They struggle with their health. It's their biggest headache. Um, as president, if you are set to do all these things and increase the education budget and the health budget, where are you going to find the money? Okay, well, the first is that we are going to find the money from the savings that we have by reducing the cost and the wastage in government. We're going to find the money also by partnering with the private sector and especially also the alumni of campus, of, of uh, schools. Most schools today have alumni that are, in fact, what I'll call the alumni economy of most schools are really, really um, high net worth individuals who will be willing to give back to the schools and ensure that their schools are well funded if they understood that the glory of their certificate is tied to the performance and the glory of the school now, not just when you were there. Meaning, today, if I, I graduated from the Obafemi Awolowo University, and today, when I go back to the school, sometimes I, my heart breaks because I'm looking at students in rooms um, that I slept in in Obafemi Awolowo uh, Hall, and, and a room that I slept in that had eight people on two, four double bunks, now have 16 to 20 people in one room lying their head on mattresses and their bodies on the floor. This is what's going on. We have to be able to find a way to get the alumni to give back because the, the glory of the school is reflected in the, the certificate I carry. So my important and uh, uh, the, the most important point I'm making is that we have to get the alumni uh, back. 68% of the, of the, of the uh, assets in, in Ivy League schools in the United States are funded by alumni. So we've got to get the alumni to know that whilst the school has given you a head start in life, you must not forget, you must always go back to the school and restore the glory of your school. Thank you. Uh, I will stay with that question and I will move on to the ACPN. Uh, we were talking about all these great ideas and I was asking where the money is going to come from. Yes, I often um, get worried when uh, budgets are allocated to ideas. And then when you sum up the total percentage that's been allocated, it's way beyond 100%. So I am very careful to not promise allocation to budget on the basis of global recommendations. One key thing that needs to happen with education is that we need to be more structurally balanced. 
a lot of what the problem is, is that we currently fund a dysfunctionality. Because education is in a state of dysfunction, a lot of the resources that goes into it does not buy you good outcome. And so we have to be very analytical in identifying what it is that matters the most in order to get learning outcomes. Research has shown us that teacher quality is critical. So even though teacher quality is recurrent cost, it needs to be recurrent cost that gives learning outcomes that are globally competitive. The second thing about finding the money for education is that there are many things about education today that revolve around construction. And the constructions that are done in education are not done on the basis of value for money. There are innovative ways of teaching today that do not require massive buildup of resources. A third thing is that the private sector, understanding that the products of education are important for its productivity, are more and more interested in what goes on in education. And so the partnership between government will support it. And finally, for all other expenditures of government that require private sector capital, government will focus on those while focusing on education as a priority. Thank you very much. Now can I ask you to focus on the screens again? Because when we asked, um, when we... When since, since I made, I, I allocated budgets and a comment was made, I want to talk about where the money will come from. 30 seconds. Yes, please. First of all, let me be clear. The YPP is a progressive party. That means that we place the citizen as the sole focus of governance. Therefore, we will prioritize the social infrastructure of this country. One, we will not have a country in which we have poor educational and poor health outcomes while we are spending one trillion naira on wasteful petroleum subsidies. That is saving number one. A trillion naira a year is a lot of money. Saving number two, I have said it, we will partially privatize the, um, the NNPC. Not to my friends, I want to be very clear. <laughs> not to my friends. So we not cronyism it, is what you're saying, no it. cronyism. <laughs> yes, and it will be, the private sector will own 49%, the government will own 51%, and we will sell it on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and there will be a 10% set aside for the oil producing communities of the Niger Delta. Okay. So, so I, I can give you even more savings. No, please don't, so, not, not right now. Okay. Okay, so because, right. because, because when we ask, when we asked young Nigerians, 51% of the voting public, they are young Nigerians between 18 and 35, to send us videos, we were deluged with so many videos. So I want to roll another one now from one young voter with a crucial question for our candidates. Roll the tape. I'm Ola Oluwa Oluwa Shola, a one champion and the executive chairperson of the Young Leaders Council. I'm 23 years old and I'm passionate about youth and leadership. And my question to all the presidential aspirants is, what is your plan for the implementation of our national youth policy? How do you plan to integrate Nigerian youth into the decision-making process and make them feel a part of it? Thank you. But clearly, it was a bit low. I heard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So that was from a young man uh, talking about youth empowerment. Uh, let me begin um, with the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria reaction, please. Our young people constitute a significant part of this country. The economic opportunities that come from their gainful en engagement uh, would be significant for accelerating our economic growth. Therefore, if we're going to claim the 21st century on the basis of the fourth industrial revolution, they must participate in the agenda of policies that would encourage that. And so we have said that 50% of our cabinet will be made up of young people. We have also promised that young people will be given not just opportunity in government, but that we would work with private sector to ensure that the kind of trainings and leadership positions that are necessary to ensure that young people are progressively doing 
better in society will be on the table. The third part of empowering our young people is that we would ensure that they are globally competitive. Their global competitiveness is necessary for us because we can actually earn loads of revenue as a result of the startup opportunities that our young people would have in the field of technology. As far as we are concerned, science, mathematics, and engineering are very important for the new economy. And our young people are the people who already foresee where this country should be going. And therefore, their insight into the design of the policies of dynamic growth of our economy will be absolutely important. We will then review the youth policy and update it so that it is reflective of youths that are important for our economy. Madam, gentlemen, this is live TV, and live TV has breaks. We're going to take one. When we come back, we'll be discussing stamping out corruption, human rights, and the rule of law on the 2019 presidential debates.